Have you ever stood in a casino or at a lottery booth, your heart brimming with fervent hope, cautiously placing your bet, dreaming that in the next moment, your life will flip upside down and the script of overnight riches will play out on you? In that instant, your heartbeat quickens uncontrollably, adrenaline surges through your veins, and you almost feel Lady Luck standing behind you, smiling as she points her scepter at you. But what is reality really like? Most of the time, when you turn to leave, your pockets are empty, your heart filled not with the joy of victory but with endless regret and self-blame. Why? Why does the gambling world perpetuate the ancient adage, nine out of ten bets lose? Why, no matter how hard an individual struggles, does the house always seem to laugh last with unshakable composure? The secret behind this is not metaphysics or luck, but a meticulously designed trap of probability rooted in cold mathematics and an unshakable cosmic law the law of large numbers. No matter what game you're immersed in, be it the dazzling lottery, the high-stakes dice, the elegantly spinning roulette, or the strategic blackjack, you've already stepped into a web woven by mathematicians and psychologists. This web has one sole purpose, to make you lose more than you win, all without you realizing it. Today, we'll uncover the ultimate truth behind 9 out of 10 bets lose, diving deep into the world of probability and psychology, letting you see firsthand how casinos cleverly exploit math and human weaknesses, ensnaring countless players who, until their last breath, believe they were just unlucky. At its core, gambling is all about probability, and the casino's eternal victory is built on a seemingly small but indestructible foundation, unfair probability design. For anyone at the gambling table, whether the house or the player, every card dealt, every die rolled, Every spin of the wheel seems brimming with randomness and infinite possibilities. But in truth, casinos have long constructed an impregnable moat through rigorous mathematical principles, ensuring that in the long run, they always remain undefeated. The legendary gambling gods who beat the casino are few and far between, and their success isn't due to ethereal luck, but to their insight into tiny loopholes in specific rules and their unconventional strategies. Even so, casinos react swiftly. Once they spot such smart players, they're promptly blacklisted and banned for life. Why? Because what casinos want most is for you to gamble purely on luck, betting on fleeting instincts and impulses, handing your precious money over to probability. This is the core trap they've designed. As long as you rely on guesses, as long as you believe in the wheel of fortune turning, the casino's victory is as certain as the rising and setting of the sun. To fully understand the casino's playbook, we must first grasp a few critical concepts. Probability, the law of large numbers, win rate, odds, and the ultimate arbiter, expected value. These concepts are not just the lifeblood of the casino's massive profit machine, but also the only yardstick for players to judge whether a game is fair or worth playing. Now, let's dissect these concepts like a precision instrument, revealing how casinos use these mathematical tools to craft unfair games that bankrupt countless players. First, let's talk about probability. At its essence, probability is a quantitative description of the likelihood of a random event occurring. It's like a calm profit, predicting how often a specific event might happen over countless trials. In mathematical terms, probability is a number between zero and one, expressed as a fraction, e.g. The chance of rolling any face on a die is one-sixth, or a percentage, about 16.67%. On this scale, zero means the event is impossible, like rolling a seven on a standard die, while one means it's certain, like the sun rising in the east tomorrow. Let's take a classic example. When you roll a standard six-sided die, hoping to land a three, the chance of that happening is one-sixth, or roughly 16.67%. This number gives us a long-term expectation. On average, every six rolls should yield a three once. But the most fascinating and dangerous thing about probability is that it only promises a long-term trend, never guaranteeing any single outcome. You might get lucky and roll that coveted three on your first try, or you might be so unlucky that even after 10 or 20 rolls, the three remains elusive, playing hide and seek with you. This is the charm of randomness, but also its deadliest trap. Probability paints a macro picture, telling us what results will look like when trials are repeated enough, but for the individual in the moment, each attempt is fraught with dramatic uncertainty. For example, say you roll a die 100 times. With a 16.67% probability, the number 3 should appear 16 or 17 times. But in practice, it might only show up 10 times, or it might crazily appear 25 times. 
Such wild swings are common in short-term trials. However, once you stretch the experiment to thousands, tens of thousands, or even millions of trials, a stunning phenomenon emerges. The results are pulled by an invisible hand, gradually, steadily, and irreversibly converging toward the theoretical probability. Let's deepen our understanding with another simple example. Imagine you're playing a dice game where you win if you roll your chosen number, say, six. Each roll has a constant one-sixth chance of landing a six. If you only play a few rounds, your experience could be extreme. You might get lucky and win three times in a row, feeling like a gambling god, or you might lose every time and walk away frustrated. Casinos expertly exploit this short-term, dramatic volatility to lure players into a false belief that they can beat the odds with luck and achieve a comeback. But the casino's true, most powerful weapon isn't about short-term wins or losses. It's the cold, formidable mathematical law hidden behind all randomness. The law of large numbers. The law of large numbers is the absolute cornerstone that underpins the gambling empire, ensuring the casino steady wins. In its simplest terms, this law states an unassailable truth. When a random event is repeated enough times, its actual frequency will approach its theoretical probability. In gambling terms, this means your personal short-term luck, good or bad, is irrelevant. As long as the game stretches on long enough and enough people play, only the cold, hard probability reigns supreme. Back to the dice example, the theoretical probability of rolling a 6 is 16.67%. If you roll just 10 times a tiny sample, the results can be dramatic. The 6 might not appear at all, making you doubt probability itself, or it might show up 4 or 5 times, convincing you it's your lucky day. The volatility is massive. But if you roll 100 times, the 6 should appear 16 to 17 times, and the actual result might range from 12 to 20, still volatile but less so. Now scale up to 10,000 rolls. The 6 should appear around 1,667 times, and the actual count will almost certainly fall within a narrow range, say 1,600 to 1,700, with fluctuations further compressed. Push it to an extreme 1 million rolls, and the number of SIXS will align almost precisely with 16.67%, with any deviation becoming negligible. The power of the law of large numbers isn't just in one person repeating an experiment. It's even more potent in collective behavior. A casino doesn't need you to roll a die a million times. It just needs a million players like you, each rolling once. Statistically, those million independent rolls are equivalent to one person rolling a million times. The total number of SIXS will almost certainly hover around 166,700. Casinos leverage this by using lavish decor, free drinks, and promotions to draw in thousands of players, ensuring the overall outcome aligns perfectly with their probability model. So, no matter how lucky you are or how much you win today, the casino doesn't panic. You're just a tiny data point in their vast customer pool, and your wins are offset by thousands of others' losses. As long as the game continues and the player base is large enough, the law of large numbers guarantees the house will always reclaim its desired profit. This perfectly explains why casinos don't fear so-called gambling gods. Even if a skilled player wins big in the short term through skill or luck, the casino remains unshaken. As long as the game persists, the law of large numbers, the casino's guardian, ensures the house will ultimately win back its chips. The casino's entire business model boils down to casting a wide net to catch big fish, relying on the statistical patterns of a massive player base to profit steadily, not engaging in a zero-sum game with any single player. Next, we must understand win rate. As the name suggests, the win rate is the probability of a player winning a bet, directly determining your chances of making money. In the dice game where you bet on rolling a six, your win rate is a clear one-sixth, or 16.67%. If the casino spices things up by requiring you to roll two SIXS in a row to win, your win rate plummets to 1 6 times 1 slash 6 equals 136, or just 2.78%. In American Roulette, with 38 slots, 1 to 36, plus 0 and 0, 0, betting on a single number gives you a win rate of 138th, or about 2.63%, and lotteries, which we encounter daily, have win rates so low they're jaw dropping. For a common four digit lottery, the chance of hitting the jackpot is about 0.23%, or 23 in 10,000. Many people mistakenly think a high win rate means the game is in their favor. But in reality, a high win rate only means you might win more often. It doesn't mean the game is fair. The win rate is just one piece of the fairness puzzle. 
What truly tips the scales is whether the win rate aligns with the odds and their combined effect on the expected value. Odds refer to the payout the house gives a player when they win, typically expressed as 1 to X. For example, a lottery's jackpot odds might be 1 colon 2500, meaning if you bet $1 and win, the house pays you $2,500. In a perfectly fair game, the odds must match the win rate exactly. Back to the dice example. Betting on a 6 has a 1 to 6 win rate, so fair odds would be 1 colon 6, bet $1, win, and the house pays $6. A quick calculation. On average, over 6 bets, you lose 5 times, losing $5, and win once, gaining $6, breaking even after 6 rounds. Fair odds ensure that, in the long run, Neither the player's nor the house's money flows drastically in one direction. If you bet $1 each time for 600 rounds, you'd theoretically lose 500 times $500 and win 100 times $600, maybe even coming out $100 ahead due to short-term swings. Play 6,000 or 60,000 rounds, and your balance approaches zero, neither winning nor losing. Conversely, even if a player gets lucky and wins several rounds, the house doesn't worry about bankruptcy. As long as the player keeps betting, the 1 to 6 win rate acts like an invisible shackle, ensuring they lose more than they win, and the house's payouts eventually return. But here's the critical point. No profit-driven casino in the real world will ever offer fair odds. The odds they provide are always systematically, precisely lower than the theoretical fair value. This tiny gap ensures the casino's steady, long-term profit. This brings us to the ultimate metric for judging whether a game is rigged expected value. Expected value is the sole indicator of whether a game is fair or tilted. The formula is simple. Expected value equals win rate times odds. The result has three possibilities. If it equals one, the game is perfectly fair and neither side gains an edge long term. If it's less than one, the scales tip toward the house and the player's money is slowly, steadily drained with each bet. If it's greater than one, the scales tip toward the player who profits long-term while the house loses. Let's apply this to our examples. For the dice game betting on a 6, the win rate is 1 to 6 and fair odds are 6, so expected value is equal to 1 6 times 6 equals 1, a fair game. In American Roulette, betting on a single number has a win rate of 2.63%, 1 38th, with odds of 35, so expected value is equal to 0.0263 times 35 is almost equal to 0.92. This is less than one, clearly favoring the house. For the lottery, with average odds of 278.26 and a win rate of 0.23%, 23 tenths, 000, expected value is equal to 0.0023 times 278.26 is almost equal to 0.64 also far below 1 and much worse than roulette's 0 0.92. Expected value acts like a gauge of how fast your money disappears. The lower the value, the quicker your funds vanish. Casinos ensure players always lose in the long run by designing games where the expected value is always less than 1. Roulette's 0 0.92 means for every $100 bet, you get back $92 on average, with the remaining $8 as the casino's profit. The lottery's 0 0.64 is even harsher, bet $100, get back $64, and the house pockets $36. So how do casinos craft these unfair games? Through two main tactics, lowering your win rate or lowering your odds. First, lowering the win rate. Take the common dice game of betting on big or small. With three dice, the sum of four to 10 is small, and 11 to 17 is big. It seems like a 50 to 50 chance with a win rate of 50% and odds of one colon two which looks fair. But the devil's in the details. If all three dice show the same number, e.g., three ones or three SIXS, the house wins regardless of your bet. This triple event has a 2.8% chance, subtly reducing your win rate from 50% to 48.6%. Now calculate the expected value. 0 0.486 times 2 is equal to 0 0.972. It's close to 1 but still less and that 0.028 gap is the casino's profit margin, known as the house edge. Second, lowering the odds. In the same dice game, imagine a more thrilling bet, wagering on a specific triple like three ones. The probability is 1 sixth times 1 sixth times 1 slash 6 equals 1 slash 2 16. 
Fair odds would be 1 216, but casinos typically offer 1 150. The expected value is 1 216 times 150, almost equals 0 0.69, far below the 0 0.972 of betting big or small. This means, despite the huge payout for a win, your money drains much faster long term. By combining these tactics with the law of large numbers, casinos create a foolproof profit model. Picture a roulette table. Players bet on numbers, colors, or sections. When the ball lands, only one number wins. Most players lose, and the few winners are paid from the loser's bets, with the house keeping the rest as profit. Let's simulate a simplified dice game. Bet on a six to win, with odds set at one colon four. The win rate is one sixth, so expected value is equal to one sixth times four is almost equal to 0 0.67, a game heavily favoring the house. If you play 10 rounds, luck might let you win multiple times, costing the house. But over 1,000 rounds or 1,000 players each playing once, the law of large numbers kicks in and wins approach one-sixth of the total. The house steadily earns that 33% profit margin. Crucially, the casino barely uses its own money, paying winners with losers' chips and skimming its share, a low-risk model. This explains why casinos strive to attract as many players as possible. More players and bets mean the game's outcome aligns closer to the expected probability, stabilizing profits. Whether it's a glitzy physical casino or an online platform, the strategy is the same. Cast a wide net, harnessing the law of large numbers to extract profits from massive transactions. So why is gambling a 9 out of 10 bets lose game? Because every game you play is designed to be unfair from the start. The expected value is always set below 1, and the law of large numbers ensures the house reaps the mathematical advantage over time. You might win some money short-term with luck, but the longer you play and the more bets you place, the more your funds are inevitably eroded by the negative expected value. Lotteries offer the dream of striking it rich, but their abysmal 0.23% win rate and unfair odds mean your long-term investment far exceeds potential returns. Table games like roulette or dice have slightly better expected values, often above 0.9, but they still can't level the playing field long-term. Is there a way to avoid losing? The best and only foolproof method is to steer clear of gambling entirely. The casino system is airtight with math and probability as its impregnable moat. Could you turn the tables and use probability to beat the house? Theoretically, yes, but it requires extraordinary mathematical modeling, iron discipline, and keen insight into rule loopholes. Even then, casinos will quickly bar such smart players. Ultimately, we return to the fundamental question. What does it mean to win? In this meticulously designed game, true winning isn't about walking away with money. Mathematically, that's impossible long-term. Perhaps we can redefine winning. If you treat a casino visit as entertainment like a movie or concert, setting a budget you're willing to spend for the thrill and leaving once it's gone, win or lose, then the ticket price is the unavoidable house edge. From this perspective, you win the experience. But the truest, wisest win is understanding the game's essence. You're not playing roulette or blackjack, you're in a statistical battle with the casino. When you grasp the math and see through the illusion of randomness to the cold rules beneath, you've already won. You've gained knowledge and immunity. In this game of probability, the only guaranteed winning strategy is to choose not to play. The ultimate answer to beating 9 out of 10 bets lose is to walk away with your reason and your hard-earned money intact. True victory lies not in landing a royal flush, but in having the wisdom to see through a game you're destined to lose and walk away.